So, limited company name or personal name? If you're a landlord, it's a question you've got on your mind. Should I buy my properties in my personal name or put them inside a limited company? Also, if I already own houses, how do I get them into a limited company? All those questions, the pros, the cons, and some more coming up in this video. Let's get into it. So it's going to be a good one, this one. Um, it's always, always a topic of conversation when you're speaking to a landlord at the moment. Um, property is more tax efficient almost always in a limited company. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about the pros, the cons, um, why, and um, yep, start to okay. unravel some of the myths. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of misinformation or confusion out there for sure. Definitely. So, All right. Uh, so how do we get into it? Let's kick off then with the things to consider of owning it in your personal name or mm. maybe joint names. Mm. Um, so I think the big one is the implications of Section 24. Yep, so Section 24 tax. Google it if you want to find out and you don't know. If you're a landlord already, you'll definitely know. Mm -hmm. It crept up on us, on lots of landlords. It, 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 it's been um, a while now, though, hasn't it? It's been a six while. Years. It's been six years, seven years. Mm. Depends on when you watch this video, of course. But um, it True. tapered in. And financial years being what they are, the year it really came in, obviously you, you're doing your accounts the year later and before yeah, filing and them out to 18 months. So well, just, just right. for um, clarity, yeah. what is Section 24 yeah. tax? So um, if you own your properties in a personal name, you, as soon as Section 24 came in and it tapered in over three or three, four years, three years, yeah. um, were now um, unable to claim interest on the mortgage that you had, if, you had a mortgage um, against your PL. So effectively, you're taxed on turnover. You got an allowance if you're a 20% tax rate or 40 or 45% tax rate, uh, you got that as an allowance. Mm -hmm. um, but still, it's totally possible if you're a higher rate taxpayer with a high loan to value mortgage to be taking money, rent, not making a profit but still being taxed on what, yeah. what got called a phantom Especially profit. when um, all the mortgage rates are yeah. flying up, it's crazy. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, a drastic situation for lots of landlords. Um, if It's got to be said, if you're not a taxpayer, maybe you're a pensioner and you're, you're mm. at a different rate, yeah. or a low rate, yeah, yeah, yeah. or if you don't have mortgages on your house, this is not a concern for you. No. you know, this is not a problem at all. You'd keep it in your personal name. You probably wouldn't worry about it too much. And... Um, all yeah. of the rules applied. I think the only benefit of the own name with mortgages is they're a little bit cheaper than limited company mortgages, but obviously not a lot these days. Yeah, so so, um, so we're going to go on to the cons of... of, of um, well, of, of yeah, I think we just talked about yeah, the things okay. to consider, the pros and the cons. I mean, yeah. I think we've said that. So, so definitely, as soon as you go in that, buy in a yeah. property in a limited company, we'll talk about how you do that. And But yeah. first of all, the why. Why would you buy in a limited company? You, Section 24 doesn't apply anymore. No. Simple as that. The normal rules of a Your business... Your mortgage payment is, and it is classed as a business yeah. expense. Money in, money out, yeah. including all costs of mortgages, repairs and renewals yeah. and all those things. There's your profit and you pay your money, your corporation tax on, on profit. Now, that is, um, that's, that's fact. Um, what else do we need to consider when it comes to the pros and the cons? Um, well... I think one of the main benefits of having a limited company over a personal is um, <clears throat> passing it on. Yeah, yeah. You're able to mm. take one director off and put another director exactly. on and yeah. um, pass it on over time. There's, there's mortgage questions there. Um, how would you pass the mortgage on one from one to another? But it does become... Um, uh, you're in a limited company. These are the kind of questions that all li all any limited companies can have. Just because it's a property based business doesn't mean mm. it, it, no, exactly. Yeah, you might have a printing business and there's a loan on the printing machine, and it's mm. a father and son business. What happens down the line? It's the same kind of questions, the same kind of processes, and accountants are pretty well versed on dealing with those kind of things. We were talking a little bit about the cost of mortgages as well. So. Um, it's totally true that the cost of mortgages in a limited company is slightly higher than personal, mm -hmm. but not that much more, like Adam was no, saying. Most of the, all the high street lenders have a, an offering on it yep. to a limited company. Um, and if you're intent on becoming a portfolio landlord, and that's a landlord with anything over four properties, five, mm -hmm. you'll find that they are, I could, probably couldn't say exactly the same, but for me, they're exactly the same. Yeah, so yeah. a portfolio landlord, I've got, I've got a, few, <laughs> a few properties, and... Um, 
they the rates that I'm, <clears throat> I, I'm able to get they're the same personal or limited True. company because I'm a, a, a large think, um, portfolio landlord. Rates go up, not down when you're a portfolio it's worth landlord. Worth noting that if um, if you've got more than I think typically they say about eight houses in your own name, mm. there's a process to move them into a limited company. It's probably That's a separate. Yeah, yeah. Um, a separate topic for us to talk about in different um, run through it really quickly. Day, there's a lot, of, there's a lot, um, a lot of there's so much info here. into that. You, you, but, yeah, if you were to you Google know that it, more than me, you'll find some horror stories of. Yeah. of um, it's not something you'd ever want to get wrong. HMRC yeah. might want to unwind good, all those schemes. A really and, good yeah. accountant, but there is a process of moving it from yeah. a, a personal name to a partnership yeah. to a limited company yeah. over a period of time. It doesn't happen overnight. You can't just do it with one or two houses because then you're just basically trying to avoid tax, aren't you? But, yeah, it's going um, to be a going concern so a going or trading concern, business. It's like, you know, eight houses, if you're managing them yourself, that, that's, for example, yeah, that's yeah. a bit... That's, that, a that's the threshold it's yeah. been shown to be. There's some, there's some, yeah. some case law that said five and other, other people, but eight would be, yeah, mm. I've got a business here. And going back to that point that accountants, the, the, the HMRC's system processes is all, you know, you get businesses that start off, grow, start off as a sole trader, become a partnership, and then come into a limited company. It's a well-trodden path. Everybody understands it, and that's essentially what you're doing. You can't fake it. You really are doing that as a landlord. Mm -hmm. If you're growing from one property to eight, to nine, to ten, that is actually what you're doing. You can't just say that, I've got three, I'm pretending, otherwise you'll get unwound. Um, <laughs> if you do that, if you go through the, the proper process, um, it, 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 there's some pros and cons, it's, it's a separate video. but you will not have to pay stamp duty and you won't have to pay capital gains tax either actually. So that's two trigger points that mm. landlords, when they're considering moving, they will say, oh, but I've got to sell my properties from me to my company. That's not true. It is if you've got three. If you've got yeah. three properties or two, yeah. yes, that is what you have to do. If you've got the natural growth of a portfolio, then actually you don't. You do need to take good advice. Um, you need it to be declared to HMRC. I think that would be the, the flag. You need a scheme number and a, like, this is what we're doing. Can I have approval? And your accountant will run you through that and put it in writing and mm -hmm. indemnify it or whatever it is that they're going to do. Um, and just make sure it's all above board and that you feel comfortable. If it feels like a dodgy scheme run mm. by somebody who's you know, pumping out lots of information on the internet and like... A, YouTube, oh my goodness, what we're saying. <laughs> you know what we're saying. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's, pe there's people out there that, you know, are they a qualified accountant? We've never, we, we, yeah. we sit here on a YouTube well, yeah, studio. Not doing accounts. It. We're not accountants. I'm no. never going to be able to do this for you. We can put you in touch with people that have done it for us and for our clients. And yeah, he's, he's, he's in office with a suit and a tie and he's a, he's a proper accountant. Proper. That's what you want. So That's what you want. I think let's, let's stay on the subject of yep. sort of the things to consider of a limited company then. Mm -hmm. um, there's three more points here. Retain profits is one. Yeah, um, so you've got the po possible problem of um, double taxation. So it, you, you've now got your properties in a limited company. So you're going to make profit in a limited company. Retained profits could be, if you're going to reinvest, that could be tax efficient. You, mm -hmm. get, to, you, don't, you get to keep it in and not pay tax on it and keep your, your, your offset every year and you're going forward on uh, retained profits and you're using them. You've got to be careful of classifying your... Um, uh, repairs of renewals and your capital expenditure. Yeah. Get a good accountant, all those yeah. things. Yeah. Um, but that, that, that can be an advantage. You're sort of building it up inside the bubble. Um, but then you have got a con of potential double taxation. So what that would mean is if you're owning your properties, I'm sounding like an accountant. I always sound like I know what I'm talking about. I've spoken to enough accountants. Yeah. Um, you're building up all the, uh, the income inside the, the, the limited company. You've got to get it back out and then you're going to be paying personal tax, like a PAYE tax sure. or dividends tax. Um, it's never been too much of a problem for me, so I do want to grow my portfolio. Um, we're going to talk a bit about um, succession planning and moving on later, mm -hmm. and that's, that's my exit, really. But as long as I'm growing, retaining profits, that's fine. The, um, it's a family business, so my wife and I can take out dividends, P-O-Y-E, and that's enough. We don't need any more than that to live on. have got another business as well, so that's okay. And I want to grow this for my um, retirement and to pass on. As we pass it on, other directors, you can have A and B mm -hmm. shares. It's all very nice and flexible. Freezer shares, you know, Google that if you want, and we'll probably do another couple of videos. That's the kind of thing we'd we'd get an, an accountant on to talk about, not just yeah. me coming off the top of my head. Um, but it's really flexible, and you can bring your bring your kids in there, and that you know, fifty years from now, I won't be here, and um, off they go. And um, oh, did I just say that? I'm going to be here more than ninety-five. I'm going to live until one hundred seventy years from now, <laughs> when I'm not here. Um, 
uh, they can take on and um, <coughs> the shares one set can fall away and they can take over the, the growth shares. So Indeed. yeah, that, that is um, very nice and flex to, flexible. The other thing is there's a mm. bit of admin involved. You know, you've got to get it set up. You can do that with Companies House yourself quite easily. An accountant can do it for you. It, it costs. Um, it costs money. money. Yeah. Costs money. Yeah. It costs money. You need. You need to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've still got. If you're a. If you're you've got properties in your own personal name, you've still got to do something. Of course, yeah. Um, a limited company. It's not thirty-five quid to set it up. You probably need, and it is from company's house, but you probably need. It's probably a thousand pounds by the time the accountant's done it and done your sit code right and made sure everything sits. Here's something else actually that's really. Um, beneficial if you are another business if you're a business owner and you've got another trading company having a group company and a holding structure so you can pass profits from the trading company your other other one to your property holding through your holding company to your property holding company um, you can move profits around without paying tax inside the group you need a good accountant tax advice all those things but that's that's useful so if you if you own a business and you're making profits elsewhere and you want to get them into property buying inside another limited company and passing it through a group. Great, mm. Both works really yeah. well. Um, which leads us to the final point here on mm. things to consider is the, the exit strategy. Why are you doing this? Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. You know? Yeah, if you want to buy six houses and you're gonna buy them all in cash, don't need to worry. Um, if you want to grow a sizable portfolio, and what, yeah, why wouldn't you? If, if you? if you get in your mind, that that's too much hassle, too much, you, know, you, don't, you don't want it, then you've, you've got some other blocks, you know, fix those. And mm. we always say, if you've got a land order, sat in front of you and said, oh, I'm, I want to stick with three. Yeah, you know, I can see they're good, but I just don't want any more. Then they're doing something else wrong. If you can get rid of the hassle and make sure you optimize everything, most landlords get to the point, you know, as long as they're not running out of runway, and they say, do you know what? Yeah, I can, I can buy a few more and that will make a difference. Um, so at that point, yeah, in, in, inside a limited company makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, Exit strategy. I think we covered it. It's um, bringing bringing it into uh, family, friends, heir, family, friends, family, and heirs, and mm -hmm. passing it over that way. I want to start talking on trusts and, and, and that kind of thing, but it's probably that's probably a subject one for, for another day. For another day, but you know, you, you've um, only got so many cycles of seven years. It is, you know, you've mm -hmm. got a seven year cycle where you can your personal allowance is. Three hundred and twenty-five thousand pounds, I think, at the yeah, moment. Yes, like that. So, um, yeah, you can start handing those over and putting them into a trust, and then your kids can take over um, in, inside the trust as well. That's another mm -hmm. way to pass over, and it's easier if it's in a limited company for that. So, um, how do you know if it's right for you then? Um, um, mm. I think you need a good advice. Don't just listen to us. Speak to a property accountant. Yeah, I think a our, specialist. Our I can summary, recommend one. Our summary would be. Buy to let in a limited company or not, 90% of our clients and people, landlords we see, would be better off inside a limited company. Most of them all Most, are yeah. now as well, buying limited companies. The only way to find out it's if you're in rare when I yeah. work with a client, source something for them in its own name. The only way to find out if you're one of the 10% is to get proper advice. So, yeah. yeah. How can so, they get in touch? And so, there'll be a link in the comments section. Book a call with me. Um, you better pick a time that suits you. If you want a referral to a specialist property accountant, I can do that. Um, we have a couple of accountants, one's Jess's, one's mine, and we can put you in touch with them. Cool, great. Well, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Um, ring, subscribe thumbs. and like, share, all that stuff. I can't think you do better than that. Depending on where you're listening, there will be thumbs. No, we can't do any better than that. You know what to do. Like, subscribe. Thanks very much. And um, it really helps if you uh, can press all the buttons. If you want to keep more of this content coming, subscribe and it will come to you automatically through the airways. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Bye now.